Unit 2, The Measurement Problem, dash, An Opening to Dualism, question mark. Section 1, Thinkers About Measurement. Chalmers presents the measurement problem in quantum mechanics as follows. Most of the time, the state evolves according to the Schrodinger equation. But when a measurement is made, the state evolves according to the measurement postulate. On this view, the world consists of waves that usually evolve linearly in a superposition and that occasionally collapse into a more definite state when a measurement is made. But, as he says, it's not easy to make sense of this picture. The problems all stem from the measurement postulate. According to this postulate, a collapse occurs when a measurement is made. But what counts as a measurement? How does nature know when a measurement is made? Measurement is surely not a basic term in the laws of nature. Hodgson adds that no part of the mathematics of quantum theory defines what constitutes a measurement. Chalmers argues that if the idea of measurement causing wave function collapse is to be accepted as clear uh, is to be accepted as a clear and objective process, then we need clear objective for criteria for when it occurs. He suggests that one solution, though clearly unsatisfactory, is to say that a collapse occurs whenever a quantum system interacts with a measuring apparatus. But, he points out, the problem here is that it is just as implausible that the notion of measuring apparatus should appear in the basic laws as it is that the notion of measurement should. Before, we needed a criteria for what counts as measurement. Now, we need criteria for what counts as a, me as a measuring apparatus. This difference among physicists is very much like the difference between methodological and ideological behaviorists. The former leave out mind and consciousness because they can't be measured, while the latter deny that such phenomena exist at all. The measurement problem concerns the question of how or whether the wave function collapses. This is a problem because of our inability to observe this process directly. The hidden puzzle is as follows. The wave function evolves deterministically according to the Schrodinger equation as a linear superposition of different states. But actual measurements always find the physical system in a definite state. Any future evolution is based on the state the system was discovered to be in when the measurement was made, meaning that the measurement did something to the system that is not obviously a consequence of the Schrodinger evolution. According to quantum theory, the Schrodinger wave equation determines the wave function at any later time. So, if observers and their measuring apparatus are themselves described by a deterministic wave function, why can't we predict precise results for measurements, but only probabilities? Despagne acknowledges that accounting for the measurement process is one of the main problems of quantum theory. 
He says, it is important to stress that the meaning of the word measurement as used in microphysics is not quite the same as its meaning in macrophysics or in everyday language. If I use a tape to measure the length of a table, I am justified in thinking that the table was that length. This is because the table is a macro system and its various characteristics cannot therefore be significantly changed by the interaction of the instrument I subjected it to in order to take the measurement. However, with a measurement carried out on a microsystem, such as an atom or a molecule, instrument, the instrument is macroscopic. It can easily disturb the system quite considerably while the measurement is being made. Consequently, we are not in general justified in thinking that the result we obtain expresses the value the quantity measured had immediately before the measurement operation. It is even conceivable that the quantity had no well-defined value at that time. But we continue, in any case, to talk about the result of the measurement, although, in reality, this merely designates the number that the instrument has registered and that we can read on the dial. In connection with the measurement problem, Whitehead talks about the modern notion of private psychological fields, which he says is the logical result of Hume's doctrine, though Hume apparently refused to accept it. Whitehead says, This modern doctrine raises a great difficulty in the interpretation of modern science. For all exact observation is made in these private psychological fields. It is then no use talking about instruments and laboratories and physical energy. What is really being observed are narrow bands of color sensor in the private psychological space of color vision. The impressions of sensations which collectively this entirely private experience arise in the soul from unknown causes. The spectroscope is a myth. The radiant energy is a myth. The observer's eye is a myth. The observer's brain is a myth. And the observer's record of his experiment on a sheet of paper is a myth. When, some months later, he reads his notes to a learned society, he has a new visual experience of black marks on a white background in a new private logical field. And again, these experiences arise in his soul from unknown causes. It is merely custom which leads him to connect his earlier with his latter experiences.